Hello, and welcome to Beat the Nation GCSE Foundation, week one with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation? Well, thousands of students have answered a quiz on my Diagnostic Questions website, where the quiz contained loads of different topics. And what I've done is I've chosen the three worst answered questions by those thousands of students, and here they are on the screen in front of you. Now I'm gonna set you five challenges to, to do with these three questions. So the first is, can you get each of these questions correct? Thousands of students couldn't, how will you get on with them? Secondly, out of those three questions, what do you reckon's the worst answered one? Which one causes the most problems? Then thirdly, can you identify what you think the most popular choice of wrong answer was for each of these questions? And now it gets tricky. Why might students have chosen each of these wrong answers? And finally, how would you help them out? So what I suggest you do is you pause the video now and you take some time, as long as you need, working through each of these questions, trying to get them right, trying to identify the worst answered question, and then try, trying to think about why students might get each of these questions wrong. And then when you're ready, restart the video and we'll go through them together. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one, let's go for it. So to build up a bit of drama, I'm gonna reveal them um, uh, in descending order. So here is the least worst answered question, if that makes sense. And it is the ratio question. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Which ratio, if any, is equivalent to nine to 12? So equivalent, we're looking for a ratio that's essentially the same as nine to 12, but written in a different form, in a perhaps more simplified form or less simplified form. Now, the easiest way to spot um, equivalent ratios is to think, okay, well, let's double it. So let's say, for example, 18 to 24. Well, I can't see 18 to 24 there. Um, halving it's a bit tricky because when you halve nine, you get 4.5 to six. I can't see any of those. So that's one way to approach the question. Keep keep looking for these equivalent ratios. But I, I don't see any of those popping up. I don't see them in A, I don't see them in C. So here's another way to approach it. Let's start with nine to 12 and let's see if we can simplify this ratio. So to simplify a ratio, we're looking for a number that we can divide both nine by and 12 by and end up with an integer answer. So what's a common factor of nine and 12? Well, three is, I think. I think if I divide nine by three, I get three. And if I divide 12 by three, I get four. Now that doesn't help us immediately because I can't see any of those. Um, I can't see three to four um, in any of these options here. But wait a minute. Now let's play around with three to four and let's let's check. So I wonder, can I change three to four into 12, oh sorry, 12 to something? So what do I need to do to get from three to 12? Well, I'll multiply it by four. So let's keep it equivalent. Let's do the same with four, multiply it by four. Four multiplied by four gives me 16. Wait a minute, there it is, A, 12 to 16. Now it would have been very hard to go straight from nine to 12 to 12 to 16, that's tricky to do. But if we put in this middle step and we go from three to four first, it's then much easier to see it. So whenever we're looking for equivalent ratios, sometimes it makes sense to simplify first and then build back up. Okay, so we're, we're claiming the answer's A. Is that right? Well, yeah, it is, that's good news. But wow, look at that, only 37% of students managed to get that question correct. The most popular answer to this is D. None of the ratios are equivalent. More students, in fact, thought that that was the right answer than the actual right answer. Why might a student have thought that? Well, here's a student's explanation. And look at that. That's exactly what we were doing when we were approaching this question first time around, looking for the easy ones, doubling it, tripling it, and so on. But if we simplify first, and then multiply, by up, uh, multiply up, we might find some of these less obvious ratios. Okay, how did you get on with that one? Don't worry about it. If you struggled, thousands of other students struggled, but at least we've seen it now. Okay, here's the next one. So this is the second least worst answered question, and it is standard form. Okay, let's take a look at this one. So five to uh, multiply by 10 to the power of four plus 3.4 multiplied by 10 to the power of five equals, and we've got to figure it out. Now there's a real temptation to dive into rules. Think, oh, do, do I add the numbers? Do I multiply the powers? What's going on here? 
I find the best way to deal with standard form questions, particularly when they're addition or subtraction questions, is to write the numbers out in non-standard form. So let's do that. So we've got five multiplied by 10 to the power of four. Well, that's not too bad. 10 to the power of four, that's the same as five multiplied by, that's 10 to the power one, 10 to the power two, 10 to the power three, 10 to the power four. So we end up with five, zero, 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 50,000, okay? Let's do the same with this, 3.4 times 10 to the power of five. Well, that's the same as 3.4 multiplied by, that's 10 to the power one, two, three, four, five. Now we'll be a little bit careful here. That's the same as, we can see it's gonna start with a three, but that 0.4, that's gonna go there, and if we just copy the rest of the zeros in, and let's just check this makes sense, I'm claiming that that is equal to, whoa, 340,000. And there's a good way to check this, by the way. If you imagine your decimal point is there where it was in its original spot, and we're going 10 to the power of five, if we go one, two, three, four, five, and we end up at the end of the number, that's looking pretty good. So now what we're going to do, we're going to add those two numbers together. Um, I always like to start with the biggest number. So let's take 340,000. I'm going to add it to 50,000. So let's line that up properly. 50,000. Always important to line up those digits. Let's add them together. Well, this is the easy bit. We're laughing here. Load of zeros. 5 plus 4 is 9. And then 3 there. Now the problem is, all our answers are in standard form, so we've got to go back. So what is that in standard form? Well, we know standard form always starts with a number that's between one and 10. So it's got to be 3.9 multiplied by 10 to the power of, and I'm going to do my trick again. So I put my decimal point there and I go one, two, three, four, five steps to get to the end. So I think the answer is 3.9 times 10 to the power of five. I think the answer is B. Is that right? Let's have a look. Whew. It's right, I can relax a bit there, but look at that. Only 37% of students got this one right. 44% of students believed that the answer to this was C. 8.4 times 10 to the power of nine. Where does that come from? Can you see that? Because that's nothing like the correct answer, right? Both of those parts of that answer are wrong. Well, let's have a look at a student explanation. You've got to add the integers first because it has a plus sign so that you can see what they've done there. Five plus 3.4 gives 8.4. And then you add the powers. Five, uh, four plus five gives you nine. Now, wow, that's a student who's just grasping onto a rule and it's not right. It's, it's, that's not how it works with, with these kind of questions. So it goes back to that challenge that I set you at the start. How would you help that student out? How would you show them that the way we've just done it is the right way and the way they've done it is the wrong way? So have a think about that. Okay, what's the worst answered question? Well, here it is, probability. Julie rolls two fair six-sided dice. What's the probability she rolls a five on both dice? How did you get on with this one? Now, this, this, these kind of questions I call combined events, where two things are happening, because here she's got two fair six-sided dice. Now, you can do a tree diagram whenever you've got two things happening or three things happening, but you end up with a load of branches. It gets quite tricky. Um, I'm a big fan of a sample space diagram. So what I do here is I, I write down all the things that could happen when I roll the first dice. One, two, three, four, five, or six. So that's what can happen when I roll the first dice. And then here I write down all the things that could happen when I roll the second dice. I could get one, two, three, four, five, and six. And here I've got a very rough sample space diagram. Now, anytime we're dealing with probability, we want a fraction, we need a numerator and a denominator. And if we get these two, two things sorted, we're laughing. So let's get our denominator sorted. What, what are all the different things that could happen when I roll these two dice? Well, if you see here that, let's say for example, on the first dice, I roll a one. On the second dice, I could roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So there are six things that could happen if I roll a one on that first dice. And there are also six things that could happen if I roll a two on that first dice. And if I continue this, you'll see that actually in total, there are 36 different things that could happen, 36 different combinations of what could happen when we roll these dice. You could get a three on one dice and a five on the other. You could get a five on one dice and a two on the other, and so on and so forth. So that's our denominator, 36. 
And then the numerator for probability questions is the thing we're actually interested in. The denominator is all the things that could happen. The numerator is the ones that we're interested in. So what's the probability she rolls a five on both dice? Well, I think the only way that happens is if she rolls a five on the first dice and a five on the second dice. That can only happen one way. So I think the answer is one out of 36. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's it. Good news, we got that right. Whew. Only 31% of students agreed with us that that's the right answer. Look at D. D, the most popular. Two out of 12. Can you see where that came from? Why might a student think the answer is D? Well, let's take a look. Have a read of that. There are 12 numbers and there's one five. And we know that's an issue straight away. There are 12 numbers. There are not 12 numbers. There are 36 things that can happen. We can see where 12's come from. They've done six plus six. And there's one five on each, meaning you have two chances to get a five. But that's not true either. There's one five on each, and that's it's both got to happen. You've got to get a five on one and a five on the other. There's only one way that happens. So both of those issues, the numerator and the denominator, are wrong. So you need to think, how would you help that child? How would you help that student who's struggling with that and show them that that can't be the right answer and that B is the right answer? So have a think about that. Um, if you want more of these, by the way, there's 20 of these quizzes you can try yourself. Head over to diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019 and you'll find all these questions for you. And if you're a teacher and you want to set this up um, as a free scheme of work so that your students can answer these quizzes and they get automatically marked, head over to ED. That's the easiest way to do this. And if you want help getting your students on the system, send a spreadsheet with your students' names and, and classes to hello at ed.co.uk and one of our team will be pleased to help you out. And all of that's completely free. And I hope to see you again for another Beat the Nation. Bye for now.